the USA is now up to 8% battery electric vehicle share of the auto market. Gas car sales are down 14% compared to five years previously. Where are we? About 96% of all the new cars sold in Norway are now electric. 60% of the cars in China, new cars being sold in China are now electric, you know. And here, whoopee, we're 8%. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. And I'm here today with our founder and chief editor, Bill Moore. How's it going today, Bill? Been good, thank you. Nice, nice, nice. All right, so the USA is now up to 8% battery electric vehicle share of the auto market. This was for the second quarter of 2024, and sales of 100% electric vehicles increased by 16% year over year. But it's, it's, it's no longer like 200% year over year. It is certainly, the growth has slowed down, but it's still 16% higher than the previous year, where it was uh, went from 7% of sales to 8.1%. It wasn't the, uh, what was it, two years or something like that? It was like 160%. Yeah. Oh, it was 86% from quarter two of 22 to quarter two of 24. Yeah. Yeah. 86% is a pretty big jump, nearly doubling sales in two years as EV sales slow down. <laughs> I always I see these like EV growth isn't, well, I, I can I can understand that. If you thought it was going to keep doubling every year, you know, then, may, then yes, the, the growth is not what you were, had expected perhaps, but uh, it's still consistent. You know, and what's interesting too, the U.S. market has some of the least incentives of all the countries in the world that incentivize EV ownership. Yeah, which is one one of the one of the articles I posted also this morning. Well, that's the point they make is that we are compared to Europe and compared to China, we are one of the fewest have some of the fewest incentives for encouraging uh, the adoption of electric. I mean, there's a reason, was it? We're, where are we? About 96% of all the new cars sold in Norway are now electric. 60% of the cars in China, new cars being sold in China are now electric, you know. And here, whoopee, we're 8%. You know, battery electric cars went up 16% in the past year. Gas car sales went down a whopping 1%. Whoa. Yeah, in that same time period. So it, it's interesting. It shows you that there's simply more people buying cars as part of it. Gas car sales are down 14% compared to five years previously. We still have millions of new gas-powered cars getting onto U.S. roads each quarter. Progress is slow. We're getting close to getting 10%. You know, I, I don't know. The thing is, in 10 years, can we be like Norway? You know, where almost all the new cars are electric? Maybe. You know, guys like Jim Farley and others are, are lamenting the fact and I posted some articles on this, I think it was last week, where they're lamenting the fact that, you know, electric cars, the whole subject has become politicized. And of course, you've got this current tug of war between one side and the other side. We are here locally inundated with, oh God, hundreds, I, I would suspect, of, uh, you know, ads uh, for various political candidates and things slinging mud at each other like crazy. And unfortunately, in the middle of that are our electric cars, which is just shouldn't be. Should There's no reason it should be there, but it has become that, and that is a drag. And it's recognized by the car makers now. That's a drag on, on, the, uh, on sales of that particular product. Well, you know, there, there's so much cherry-picking of statistics or whatever. I mean, you know, you and I have talked about this. Like, if I really wanted to criticize electric cars, I'd be going after the really weak points of electric cars. People pick on the dumbest things, like somehow they have this idea that EVs are catching on fire everywhere and all these other things. It's like, you know, we really know the real problem is, you know, it's going to take a long time to make it possible for people to live in apartments. There's issues there where it's simply not practical for people unless it gets to a situation where, like you said before, if every street lamp has a charger on it, then maybe, you know, even if it's a level one or level two charger, then maybe that changes things. Yeah, or parking meter, you know, street lamps, parking meters. Uh, you know, over over in, over in Europe, there was, uh, oh, God, probably been 15 years ago now, 
There was a movement to convert payphone booths to electric car chargers, right? It's a good idea. You know, uh, nobody's using payphones anymore, so use that installation to uh, to go ahead and uh, charge cars. So. Yeah, but there's a difference there. So payphones use low voltage wiring. It'd be different if they were had 110 power draw. They, they they don't even have that. So you know, there's a difference. Whereas you know your street lamps. Well, yeah, but they do have they do have lights in them, right? Oh, that's true. So they must have something. Yeah. So there's some there's some juice there. They're not completely standalone. I I think the majority of people could deal with level one charging. Oh yeah. You know, if you had level one charging available everywhere where people could just plug in and, uh, you know, add three to five miles of range to their car every hour, I think you uh, find it's not really such a big deal. I mean, uh, and then if you have shopping centers have level two chargers and then, you know, you have your level threes as needed, I I think you can get through a lot of things. Well, yeah. Well, I I keep stressing this. You know, I I own an electric car. I've had it since uh, 2019. And uh, for the first three years of ownership, I just used 110 for that car because I'd park it in the garage at night, plug it in just before I went to bed, wake up in the morning, I get a full charge. You know, it's not rocket science. In fact, one guy, uh, an article posted where he's making the point, if you want to convince people to adoption, have them understand that this is just the same thing as you plugging in your your phone at night. No difference. It's just like that. In fact, Honda just just received a patent for wireless charging. So you don't even actually have to, at some point, you won't even have to actually physically plug the car in. You pull into the driveway or the spot where the wireless charger pad is. You pull over it. You probably get a light on the dash that says, good, bing, you know, you're good. Uh, you get out of the car, you go have dinner at night and overnight at some point the car charges itself and you never have to actually physically like I do go out plug it in unplug it which is no big deal it takes what five seconds hi I'm David with EB World News if you like this video then please press the like button if you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles then please hit the subscribe button if you have some feedback for us please let us know in the comments have a great day